I have a couple tips this afternoon. Um, if you are newly pregnant and you've done all the research, you think, you know, you know all there is to know about what to watch out for in pregnancy and getting ready to, for delivery and all that good stuff. The reason why I feel qualified to tell you this <laughs> is because, mm, I don't know, 11 years ago, 12 years ago, that was me. Um, we knew far less than what we know now about um, kind of what goes on in pregnancy with our bodies, what goes on with our pelvic floors, what certain symptoms mean. Um, and I thought I knew all there was to know and was sorely mistaken. And so I share this because that was me, but then also the more people I see um, sharing advice online about pregnancy while they are in their first pregnancy is, is, you know, it's pretty high. And, and let's just be honest, you're going to talk about the things that you're experiencing in your life. So, um, that wasn't something that was a thing when I was pregnant with my kids, I, I might've chosen to do the same thing if it were. Um, that being said, <laughs> It's a lot easier to talk about it in the rearview mirror than it is while you're going through it and you don't know what you're saying is going to turn out to be. So, couple of, um, Talis says, how can a prenatal and postnatal yoga teacher go deeper into pelvic floor knowledge and helping my students? Okay, so let's start with this. One is there's no right answer, okay? Um, and I will kind of share a story that I saw. Um, a pelvic floor therapist currently pregnant and I think she's just into her second trimester. She's like, I'm not having any urinary symptoms. I'm not even getting up frequently at night. I guess I know what I'm talking about. To which I say no. <laughs> um, typically symptoms in the first trimester, if you have them, it may be because you had them before pregnancy or because you had issues before. Um, it can be hormonally related, that sort of thing. Just because you haven't gotten symptoms doesn't mean they're not coming. Um, so I think that's an important thing to understand, um, is that be prepared for everything and anything, and there's no right answers and we kind of just have to see how it goes. And I think that's even on subsequent pregnancies, they're going to be different. You might have a better sense of, okay, I'll just take it as it comes, but just assume that things are going to be different and there's no right answer. Um, number two is, um, we need to stop this whole, are you doing your kegels? Um, and I think that message is getting out. I talked about that again in, in a post today, um, where, you know, we've got so many providers being like, are you doing your kegels? Thinking that that's the only prep for birth when actually what we do know is um, hip openers, pelvic floor relaxation, all that stuff's important because it's the uterus that contracts, not the pelvic floor. The pelvic floor has to relax and open up um, and that's sometimes why you have some of those aches and pains because everything is literally trying to open up and your poor little hip muscles are trying to hold everything together. And that's where you can get hip pain at night and achiness and all that kind of stuff that comes. So those are the things, if you're like, oh, I'm in second trimester, I don't have any of those aches or pains, they're coming, <laughs> okay? Um, I think the third thing is we have to stop with, and this is this is what I get all the time, even I, I got it a couple weeks ago with somebody, it was her second pregnancy, and she was so scared to lay on her back. And she said, well, I'm not supposed to, to lay on my back. And she was having an awful time sleeping and couldn't sleep. And I'm like, why are you not laying on your side? And she's like, well, I'm not supposed to. I'm like, eh. And yes, if your baby is positioned on top of your aorta, on top of your vena cava, it's not going to feel good. You're going to change position. But the likelihood of you staying there and, and, and enduring what's not going to feel great is pretty small. So my happiest moments, um, and again, you know, this is this is not direct medical advice, uh, you know, always refer to your, your physician. My happiest moments with both of my children who went to 41 and a half weeks is waking up flat on my back because I could breathe um because they weren't you know stuffing up against my diaphragm so i think demystifying and at least giving people instead of don't do this don't do that like with yoga the one that comes up is don't do inversions or don't do this or don't do that if you've never done an inversion before i wouldn't start just like if you didn't run a marathon before don't start right now so, but you know if you've done these things before and there's um 
a paper that just came out with Christina Previtt, uh, Margie Davenport, I think Lori Forner was on it, looking at lifting in pregnancy. Um, like if this is stuff you're already doing, chances are you're gonna scale back and modify anyway, same with yoga poses, and you're not going to, in most cases, willfully you know, do harm to your baby um, or end up with detrimental things. You're far better off because you're gonna be active. So it's kind of like the deli meat advice. Like if you weren't gonna eat it anyway, if you weren't gonna go to that deli anyway, like not a good time to start and eat bad stuff now. Um, if you haven't eaten non-pasteurized food before, I wouldn't start now in pregnancy. Just the, the, the laying on your back is kind of the same thing. Like if, if you understand that, hey, if you experience these symptoms, you may wanna prop yourself up a little bit, at least gives people a choice and an understanding of, oh, I'm not going to you know, die an instant death. Um, I'm gonna feel uncomfortable. I'm gonna know that I'm gonna change position. Same thing, I think, with acupuncture points. I can't tell you how many orthopedic PTs are like, I don't wanna work on your ankle because I can spontaneously put you into labor. Trust me, they had to pry my baby out of my body. Um, it's just, <laughs> if you're going into labor, those things will help it along. It's not like these things are a can opener and can do it upon demand. It just doesn't work that way. So those are the things that I, I, I think that I see coming up more are, you know, moms who are in the postpartum space trying to educate while they are going through it themselves. And again, I caution you from doing that just because, again, you don't know what's coming. Um, the advice that you give, we don't know the outcome yet. Um, and again, that's, say, that's said with the privilege of one, I laminated my birth plan. So I, I clearly had issues and thought that I knew everything beforehand. So, you know, saying that um, with an ounce of humility there. And then two, like, again, it's a lot. There's no reason to have to process this stuff while you're going through it. Deal with it after the fact and then look back and be like, hey, that was the right thing for me in that right moment. Or no, it wasn't. But to process it and try and, you know, educate while you're going through. I think there's some unique challenges, Abby, um, to that. And I don't know that that's necessarily, for me, would have been the best choice. So stop with the constant Kegel conversation. Stop with the, oh, well, I, I must be preventing this stuff because I know everything. No, it, you don't know what's coming. And then stop with the, you know, the crazy myths where, you know, don't do this, don't do that, or you're gonna spontaneously explode. Um, so those are the, the tips that I have for today, and apparently Abby's fine with that too. Um, if you have any other, you know, things that you're seeing on postpartum, and again, <laughs> I feel bad for these moms. Anytime people, you know, bring up the Peloton app, I feel so bad, I don't know her name, but the coach that was pregnant and postpartum, and literally Peloton is throwing out that pregnancy and postpartum app as she's pregnant, that poor woman. <laughs> thing you shouldn't have to do that your first time around um but let me know what you're seeing out there i would love to kind of dive in and unpack some of the stuff that's out there but i think the ones that we talked about were just uh, the most common uh i don't know that there will be a chat on monday because hopefully i will be coming back out from the grand canyon um and i will survive and it will be fun but anyway hit me up in the dms i'd love to hear what kind of um advice you're hearing out there for new moms or actually pregnant moms